Thank you very much. And you are now a host again. Thank okay. you. And you can you can see my screen still, right? Yes. Sorry for okay. the interruption. No, no problem. So uh, getting back to, to the presentation. Uh, uh, L3 agent. That's uh, another um, big difference between ML2 OVS or Linux bridge and ML2 OVN. Uh, backends. In case of ML2 OVS, there was uh, L3, a Neutron L3 agent uh, run on controller or networker nodes. If you had uh, had separate networker nodes, and sometimes if you are using DVR, then L3 agent is also run on each compute node to uh, to do uh, distributed uh, virtual router. Uh, router. But that's only the case if with DVR and not always. Usually when you are using, for example, L3HA, uh, Neutron L3 agent is on networker nodes only. In case of uh, ML2 OVM, there is no L3 agent. Um, L3 uh, stuff is handled by OVM and OVM uh, logical routers. Um, SNAT traffic is uh, centralized still uh, on the gateway chassis and the uh, floating AP, so DNAT is, uh, is distributed by default. So you have DVR um, by default for all floating APs. And DHCP is another big difference uh, between those two backends. Um, so in case of ML2 OVS, again, there is Neutron DHCP agent, which typically it's run on networker or, or controller node. And it has uh, configuration for many networks. And you know that there is a lot of problems when you have a lot of networks, when you want to, for example, restart uh, this agent, it takes ages to synchronize everything and so on. In case of ML2 OVN, uh, again, there is no any agent for that. DHCP is uh, services provided by OVN, um, by OVN DHCP options um, feature. So basically that's the just entry in OVN database and OVN, will, OVN controller will uh, respond to locally. Uh, it's also fully distributed like metadata and uh, the ACP request will be uh, replied locally on the compute node always uh, for, for VM, which is asking for, for this. And yeah, mapping between Neutron resources and OVM because Neutron has got a lot of different resources which you can create and manage. And uh, in fact, OVM has got the same or almost the same, very similar. And we are doing some kind of mapping to and knowing about this mapping may be very useful when you will try to debug or check something in OVN. So basically port in Neutron is logical switch port or in case of VN ports or logical router port in case of ports which are plugged to, to, to the router in Neutron. Network in Neutron is something called logical switch in the OVN. A router is uh, from Neutron is logical router and, and then subnet, as I said, is DHCP options. Mm. Security group is represented in OVN by port, something called port group. And it, it has ACL rules, which are uh, basically security group rules. And then floating IP is uh, something called NAT. In OVN and NAT can be uh, can have two one of the two types one is DNAT and SNAT type and that's floating IP and the other type of NAT resource in OVN is SNAT and that's the gateway port for the router if you have to plug external gateway that port will will that will be NAT with uh, SNAT type basically but let's try to now to do some basic exercises, you can run your VMs. I will, uh, in this part, I will share, uh, I will still show slides with examples and uh, you can run the same commands on, on, the, on your VMs to see how, how it is uh, for you and your, uh, your desktop environment. If you have any questions, please, uh, please just ask. Uh, 
I will try to, to answer them um, as we will, we will go through this, um, those exercises. Uh, so let's, those exercises are very, very basic and I just want to show you those mappings and how things from Neutron are really represented in OVN and how to, to find those things and, and, and so on. So let's first start with networks. Of course, every one of you can do uh, know how to do how to list networks in Neutron, uh, so you can do OpenStack network list, and you will have output with networks with some IDs and some names, and and, and that's that's it. And now, from the central node, um, that maybe from the beginning, there is uh, to interact with northbound OVN northbound DB, there is OVN and BCTL tool. It's pretty similar to, for example, OVS uh, VSCTL tool, uh, which you are probably familiar with. Uh, but this time, this NBCTL tool uh, help, uh, allows you to, to query northbound uh, or interact with OVN northbound uh, database. And the first uh, command which you can do there is OVN northbound CTL LS list, which is logical switch list. And if you do that, you will see your network, you, some IDs, which are uh, IDs of the logical switches in the OVN, but in the parentheses, you will have a name called Neutron dash and some ID. And this ID is actually ID from the Neutron database. So. You can easily, if you have Neutron ID, from, uh, Neutron network ID, you can easily find it, uh, find a logical switch for, for, for this network in OVN uh, database. And also you can do simply OVN nor, uh, and BCTL show and then this Neutron dash network ID and you will get a list of the switch, uh, uh, list of the ports which are connected to this uh, network. Basically, each port represents, uh, like port in Neutron. So VM or router port or, or things like that. Hmm. Any questions or did you uh, try to do that? Was it okay? Maybe if if you will do uh, such exercise, maybe you can click on the yes icon in the participant list. I, I think that I will see how, how many of you actually did that. So we will be able to move on or give you more minutes. What do you think? Robert, do you have any question? Okay, I think we can move on. So let's go to the other, to the next thing. 
Next one, after the network is done, uh, we have subnets in Nodeson. Um, and basically the subnet can be found in Northbound database uh, by doing command like on the slide. So OVN and BCTL find DHCP underscore options. And you can set in external IDs, uh, you can specify subnet ID. The subnet ID is, uh, is ID of the subnet in, in the Neutron. Uh, basically, so again, it should be pretty easy to, to find it, uh, to find in OVN uh, something from the from the neutron. Uh, in in this DHCP options, I think everything should be pretty easy to understand. So uh, basically, you have some external IDs, which is the subnet ID in this case. You have the seed. Uh, set and some options for DHCP like classless uh, static routes, uh, DNS servers, uh, NTU, and other things. That, which, in case of ML2 OVN, of course, were configured in DN, uh, DNS mask uh, config. And also, uh, you can easily find uh, all ports which are plugged to the same, which are using the same subnet. Uh, by doing command like the bottom one on this slide, so OVN and BCTL find logical switch port. DHCP V4 options equal, and you can specify here your ID from the, uh, of the DHCP options from the command below. So you can find uh, DHCP options for a specific subnet from neutral, and then find in OVN. All ports, logical switch ports, which are uh, which are which have uh, have IP addresses from the same um, subnet. You can try the same um, on your uh, VMs now. I think that this should be pretty easy to do. And I think we can move on. If it's too fast or, or you have any questions, please just um, ask on the chat or what does here. Um, so next thing is in notes on port, of course. So you may have ports which are uh, which are used by VMs and routers. First of all, let's check the ports which are used by VMs. So we have you can do OpenStack port list for some, and that's that device ID and then some VM ID. So you will have ID of the uh, port which is uh, used by uh, one of the VMs in the in the OpenStack. Uh, and if you want to to find this port in neutr in OVN northbound uh, database. You can do OVN and BCTL show, which basically will show you everything, all logical switches or all uh, and logical routers and uh, other things. It's kind of like OVS VSCTL show command, and you can look for logical switch there or for this port there. You can all, if you know uh, the network ID, you can also do OVN and BCTL show. Uh, to, to, to get uh, this one logical uh, switch as was shown on the, one of the previous slides uh, related to network. And you will get uh, OVN uh, logical port, which is the port from the Neutron. You will get IP address, MAC address from this port is the same like in Neutron database, and you will have uh, the same ID of the port as in Neutron, and in the parentheses, there will be always name of the port given also. 
name uh, of the port specified in the notes on actually so you can again pretty easily find uh, things which are uh, find things from notes on database in in the uh, OVM database to, to investigate and check what what's configured there or and how, how it looks like And the next one, next thing is router actually in Neutron. And routers in Neutron, are, as I said, are uh, mapped in OVN uh, database like as a logical router, logical router switch. So again, it's very similar to networks. Like there was logical switch, now there is logical router. So if you do OpenStack router list uh, to list routers in Neutron, you will get some router uh, which is created there. And then you can do OVN northbound CTL LR uh, dash list, which is logical router list to list uh, those routers, uh, logical routers in OVN. There will be uh, some entry uh, which is mapped to the uh, Sorry, to the uh, Neutron router with Neutron dash uh, and ID of the router there. So you can easily find it. Um, you can also check if uh, command like OVN and BCTL show uh, and then Neutron, uh, Neutron dash and ID of the router will work too. Uh, so I didn't add this to, to the slide, you can check that. Uh, but basically it should be like the same like for logical switch and for, uh, for, for the network. So that's the uh, logical router, and, uh, which is router in Neutron. Then if you check ports from this logical, uh, from this uh, router in Neutron, in our case, there is three ports in the router because we have external gateway and two ports for, for two different subnets, two different networks. And you can do OVN, Northbound, and BCTL show uh, to, to get this uh, information about this uh, logical router and to list ports which are in this router. And actually they will be the same like in Neutron. So we have three ports here. Uh, with uh, names like LRP dash and some idea uh, ID uh, there. This ID is the same ID as uh, ID in the, of the port in Neutron again. And there is information like MAC address of the port, the same as in Neutron and network, uh, the same as the subnet in Neutron. And the IP address is the same as uh, in Neutron actually. In case of gateway port, there is additional information, which is gateway chassis. So as you remember uh, from the beginning, chassis in OVN is basically host um, in, in the, 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 the other, uh, in the open start world, uh, I would say. So in our case, in this case, there is only one chassis because we have only one node with uh, external gateway configure it uh, in our lab, but if you will have, for example, three network nodes, three, three gateway nodes, you may have three chassis here and you don't really know which one is active in, in such case. Uh, but by doing the command which is given below, so OVN, NBCTL, LRP, get gateway chassis, uh, you may get list of the chassis for that uh, router with some priorities and the highest uh, one is the, is the active one. And, then, and also if you, uh, if you have this gateway chassis ID, um, you can query OVN South, South band uh, database with OVN SBCTL uh, show command, for example. And then you will find this chassis there and you will find host name. So you can easily identify which actually which host it is, uh, on which host is this chassis uh, and 
where, where to go to, to do uh, some other investigation and debugging what's going on there. So that's basically this. You can of course try to, to, to check those uh, things on your lab. So maybe I will uh, wait a minute or two. Okay, let's move on. I hope you all check that and everything works fine for you. So next thing is Neutron Routers Gateway, um, which as I said, we have in, in Neutron, as you know, we have these gateways and that's represented, uh, oh, actually I, uh, I said here, uh, Mark still floating IPs. Uh, no, I don't know, gateway. So, uh, sorry. okay, so for if we have router with one gateway port and two subnet, two private subnet, private networks connected to it, we will have two uh, in the logical router in, in OVN, we will have uh, two NAT entries with type S NAT, which means that it is only for, for the gateway, so traffic can go out with, with this. And uh, we will, in no OVN uh, output from OVN and BCTL show command, for example, you will see the NAT entries with external IP, which is IP address used by uh, external gateway in Neutron, and the logical IP, which is uh, a seed of the subnet from Neutron. And basically, that's all, so you can easily check that you have entry for uh, in the router, you have entry to to do SNAT from the logical uh, IP, so subnet in Neutron to some external IP, which is a uh, gateway in Neutron. And pretty similar thing, so if you have any floating IPs configured in the router, you will get, uh, you will see on, also in the same output, additional NAT entries which will have type DNAT and SNAT. And that means that it's floating IP, then logical IP is a fixed IP address from the Neutron database, so basically IP address assigned to VM. And external IP is this floating IP from the, uh, from the Neutron uh, world. And basically that's all. So you can find uh, easily uh, any DNAT and SNAT uh, entries which are basically floating IPs for uh, from Neutron. And uh, one last thing about floating IPs and this NAT entries in OVN, you can find, for example, all floating IPs which you have configured in Neutron by doing OVN and BCTL find the NAT and then specify type, type DNAT and SNAT. Uh, that will list you all of the NAT entries. And one important thing here, you can also check that in your, uh, your desk pack and, and Daniel will also uh, talk about it in the troubleshooting part. So there are two uh, attributes here, external MAC and logical port. If both of them are set as 
like on the slide, then it means that uh, floating IP is distributed and traffic will go directly to the compute node and from the compute node. And uh, if one of at least one of those fields is uh, empty, then uh, floating IP is not distributed and uh, traffic will go through the gateway traffic. So that's uh, the easy way to to quickly check if floating IP, specific floating IP in your uh, environment works as distributed or centralized. Uh, yeah. Uh, next one are security groups in Neutron. And as I said, those are represented by port groups in the node in the OVN, you can again list all port groups uh, by using OVN and BCTL command, like on the slide. Then you will get uh, some groups with some ACLs, so rules from the uh, so things which represent security group rules from Neutron, and then there is external IDs where you can find security group ID from Neutron, so you can know that this port group is uh, representing the specific security group from Neutron. And there are ports also, so those are IDs of the logical uh, switch ports from the OVN. Logical switch ports from the OVN, uh, which are using this port group. So we, the port which are using uh, specific security group in uh, Neutron. Uh, so you can also check that on your dev stack. And the next, the last uh, thing which I wanted to show you is a security group rule. Uh, as I said, it is OVN ACL which is listed in port group. Uh, ID of those uh, ACLs are listed in port group, but you can also list uh, ACLs for specific port group. And mm, the output of this should be pretty easy to understand. There are rules two and for incoming and outgoing traffic, and uh, there is some match action, which is exactly the same, actually like something defined in Neutron. So um, that's easy to, to find out and to, to, to understand what's going on there. And there is also some bit more kind of complicated, longer uh, command at the slide, at the bottom of the slide, where you can find all uh, ACLs in OVN uh, northbound uh, database uh, just by knowing uh, Neutron security group ID. And that will give you exactly the same output like, uh, like is above on the slide. You can try that out later. I will maybe uh, paste those comments in the HRPAD later so you can copy paste that. I, I should do that before, but uh, actually I forgot. So that's uh, basically everything what I have uh, for this basic uh, introduction to OVN and o Neutron OVN driver. And now I will uh, share my console and Daniel will uh, take over and go show you some typical uh, failures and how to uh, how to investigate and how to fix them. Thank you, Zarek. I, I was okay. okay. No, I can, can you see, see the screen. Can you see? Uh, should I make it bigger, maybe? Uh, I don't know. I can read it okay, but. All right. So, uh, yeah, thanks, Lavik. Just a super quick introduction from my side. Uh, my name is Daniel Alvarez. 
Um, for those who don't know me, I've been contributing to networking OV and code uh, for the past two or three years. Um, so I'm going to just show a couple of what we think is typical troubleshooting exercises. Feel, please feel free to interrupt me, uh, unmute yourselves, ask any questions. This is, uh, I want it to be very as interactive as possible. So if you think that I go too fast or something is not really clear, just stop me whenever and we will go through it. So um, for those, I'm sorry, first, because we have been sending uh, patches to these background file project. So for those of you who have deployed the thing before today, you're probably missing these files here with the failure scripts. So if you don't have them, like uh, just pull the latest bits from the, from the repo. We can do it here together. There we go. Okay, so if you don't have them, you should be able to find them here, right? So let's go uh, with the failure number one. So just super quickly to see that um, this is what you are supposed to have in, in your current lab. Uh, we have made some changes to make sure that certain machines are put it in the worker one and certain others have been put it in the central node. If you don't have this particular layout, I will give you some tips to figure out how to follow up on the, uh, how to follow the exercises. So um, I'm going to do this, this first exercise with the blue one machine. So um, I have loaded the credentials here. So the blue one here. Let me figure out. In my in my case, I have it in the worker one, but let's verify this together. So if you see the port ID is three one zero ECB. Oh sorry. And the three one zero ECB is the last one here. So you can see that it's under the chassis worker one. So that means that the blue one machine uh, lives on the worker one. So again, uh, we can actually verify this by just like in ML2 of yes, we can just check the, the uh, tab interfaces. Three, one, zero, e. And we see the tab port here. So it's the same way, like the tab interface is plugged into the OBS bridge and OVN controller will take over of the VR int. So similar way. This is another way of figuring out where a, a machine is. Of course, you can use the OpenStack uh, server show and figure it out that way too. But okay, so let's execute the first failure. Um, background failure one. Let's read from the central machine. So basically, this has disrupted the traffic to the floating AP. Let's not disclose everything, although you have the files. So uh, uh, let me ping the floating IP. Okay, so it's not disrupted, but it is because we have DVR uh, and the DVR setting in, one thing that we probably missed mentioning here is that um, in, in ML2 OPN, the East West routing is always distributed. So that means that uh, if you have a VM running on one on one hypervisor and another one, another hypervisor and different networks and you ping each other, uh, that will go directly from that hyper, from the source hypervisor to the destination hypervisor. It will never go to a, to a central node. And that is true regardless of the DVR configuration because East-West is always distributed in OVN. But for the floating AP, you need to have the correct configuration. You have to have a port on the floating AP network on the hypervisors. And then we control this setting with a neutron uh, config option that I can show you here. Uh, 
So in this setup, um, this setting is true. So if we ping a floating IP from this machine, uh, we have a, an IP on the, we have configured the 172.24.43 IP address in, in the central node. So I'm going to ping the floating IP of blue one. And it is expected to be distributed because of the setting that we, we have uh, seen here, right? So I'm gonna ping the 132. So if you happen to have blue one on the central node, um, I think it's best if you would just use the other floating AP, red one. I mean, unless you have something uh, weird, I think that one of both should be on the worker one. If not, just let me know, or you can please just you know follow this term, uh, the team obsession, and ask me any questions. So right, uh, we're pinging here. As I said, we expect this traffic to be distributed. So one thing that we can use to verify is like, let's see the OBS configuration in the worker one node. So we have a VR int, the integration bridge, typical like with the mode to OBS. And then we have the external bridge, which has the Ethernet to NIC attached to it. So if we put a TCP dump on the Ethernet, Ethernet 2 for ICMP traffic, we should be able to see the traffic, but because we have executed the failure script, the traffic is not coming through the physical interface. Um, because it is working, it has to go through the tunnel. There's no other way. Either it goes to the physical interface and then it's using the tunnel interface, the GNIF tunnel interface, the equivalent to the VXLAN one that we are that, that we have in ML12. So for that, we can figure out if that is true. And instead of capturing packets on the Ethernet too, we can capture on the tunnel. And we, we see that the traffic is coming from the from the tunnel interface. So I'm gonna start the same. Capture but then the physical interface. So what we need to do now is to restore the like uh, restore the traffic to be distributed so that it doesn't need to go to the central node. In this case, because we have two nodes, it's actually going to the gateway through the tunnel, it's going to the um, central node, which is hosting the gateway. We can see that here as well. So you can see that the CR LRP, CR stands for chassis redirect and LRP stands for logical router port. So we have two gateway ports and those are bound to the central node. So the traffic is going through the tunnel to the central node and from there it's going to go again through the, through the actual so the hypervisor which hosts the destination VM. In this case, because I'm pinging from the external network, it will just go through the, um, through the interface which I've configured the IP on. So uh, in order for us to restore the distributed bit for the floating IP, if you remember earlier, uh, Slavic commented about these two fields for the NAT table. So we can check, uh, this particular entry, and you see that the external mark and the logical port. So both fields have to be filled, and this is something that Neutron, like Neutron, does right. That when it when the DVR setting is on, um, it will populate these two fields, both the external mark and the logical port. So now this one is empty. So this is why the traffic is going. Sorry, external mark. This is why it's going centralized. And we want to make it um, distributed, right? So the map that we have for this one, we can we can check how it does it look for the other floating IP that we have. In the other one is centralized, right? So, uh, sorry, it's distributed. So it's populated, we need to do the same. And, and this map actually corresponds to, to the floating IP MAC address allocated by Neutron. So if we do, Something like this, we will see that, that the, for, for the 131, we have the one in, in F4B6, whereas for the 132, which is empty, uh, we need to use the MAC address of the floating IP here. So we can write directly into the DB. And we use the same tool 
will be an MVCTL set because we want to set a specific column for a particular row in this table. Um, actually, let's do let's fetch the ID. Here's the ID here. This is the row that we want to change on the external map. We need to escape the uh, columns here. It's a bit of a pain, but let me. And before I execute this command, I'm going to zoom out so that we can see the TCP lamps, right? And yet it doesn't work, which is good. Okay, so now the traffic should be distributed, but it's not. Oh, sorry. Okay, I was changing the wrong one. It's this one because it's the 132, which is the one corresponding to blue two. And 132, the 189. Ah, and I don't have the ping run. This is why it was not working. Okay, so I'm pinging now and you see the packet flowing from the uh, upper right window. So it's coming from the Ethernet to interface and nothing comes from the tunnel. So we restored the distributed part of it. There's another way of fixing it. And this is a recent patch that we landed um, not so long time back, because you may face the situation where you have, I think this is kind of rare, but it, it can be certainly possible where you have a bunch of floating APs on a non DBR setup, and then you want to make it distributed. So what happens with existing floating APs? Either you go and do this, or then you let Neutron to do it automatically. So we, we landed a patch not so long time back to honor this change. So if we run the failure script again, I mean, this is something that if you update your system uh, to make it DVR, uh, then you will just change the setting on Neutron.conf and then ideally you restart the server. So um, now if we do this, the traffic goes again through the tunnel. So we have centralized traffic. But as I said, like Neutron has a mechanism to detect this and it, it runs up on restart. So if we restart Neutron server, we can let it restart and ping. So eventually Neutron is supposed to fix it because it will see that the configuration option is set to DBR, but there's certain floating APs that are not properly configured to that. So during the startup, it will figure that out. And as you can see now, the traffic is flowing from the ethernet to interface. So this is another way of fixing it. It's not, I mean, the first way is like the OBN way, um, you know, using the DB commands. But if you're, if you're having a setup and you want to change the configurations, um, Neutron will, will take care of this change. As I said, this is something that I think is probably in, in Usuri. I don't think it's in earlier releases. For early releases, you may need to go uh, and do the same thing that I just did. Okay, so let's move on now that we have the traffic restored here. Um, let's execute the failure to... It is just, is there any questions to here? All good? Let me check the... Okay. Just feel free to, I'm not able to catch up with the chat, but if there's something that you would like to ask, feel free to interrupt. Um, and I will move on now to the failure number two. So um, let's run it. Failure two, again, from the central node. So, and the, let's do the same thing, right? Like, uh, let's try to ping. 
the same floating AP? And it doesn't work. Uh, why it doesn't work? Let's put a TCP down and see what we can see here. So if you see uh, the trap, like actually, there is, you see the, re the, the replies are being sent by the virtual machine, but the destination MAC address is this one that looks incorrect. I, I don't think that you can see what I'm highlighting, but you see that is the dead beef 0101. So um, that is definitely not right. So this is why the packets are not arriving to, to the central node. So if we see we're pinging from 172.24.43, which is located here, and the MAC address is the one that ends in E049. So what has happened is that the failure that we have introduced um, is poisoning the local OVN. I mean, it's not local, but it's the ARP cache that OVN holds. So this is stored in a table that is called MAC binding. So if we see, let me, I have a bunch of IPs, but let's see this particular entry that we are interested on. Right, so we see that is the poisoned entry. And this is the source of truth that OPN uses when it needs to, you know, kind of like similar to the L2 pop mechanism driver, where instead of our, you know, sending an ARP request to every destination, it has this local, again, not local, it's distributed because all, all the, uh, all the nodes are going to use this table. So it will have this OVN cache for the ARP entries. So it will not try to ARP the destination if it is known to him. So it will just use this MAC address, it will trust the, the database, and it will use it. So what happens is that it's not reaching the destination because it is wrong. So why can this happen? Um, well, it can happen, right? Like if you have this 172.24.43 is something that we have, is an external host. So maybe this IP is moved, like you can, you know, reprovision this host, move the, move the IP somewhere else and yet OVN will have the, the wrong uh, IP address or MAC address for this actual IP address. So this is a problem that we have reported upstream. Like it's, you know, we have discussed it a little bit, um, basically a few times, but we never reached to an agreement on how to fix it. Like there was some discussions toward uh, having an aging mechanism. So entries that have not been used, um, just expire them. But it's really, it's kind of hard to figure this out because sometimes you know, this is distributed, so maybe one hypervisor is using it, but how, what if other um, hypervisors have never used this? So you need some sort of consensus on where, uh, when a particular Mac binding entry has not been used for a certain amount of time. So there have been some discussions, yet nothing has been decided. In Neutron, we did some mechanism, uh, we introduced some mechanism protection for the floating IPs that belong to OVN. Those are uh, handled by Neutron, but for IPs that are external to OVN, uh, this is hard. So what, what is the solution here? Well, you know, first, the, the first step is coming to the conclusion that this is the actual issue. Once we have it there, we can actually have a, I mean, we could have like some sort of fallback mechanism to, like even periodically, you can drop this table fully. And the drawback of doing that is like you are going to repopulate it. So all the you're going to have a lot of art traffic uh, if you drop the whole thing. Another option could be if you know that one entry is problematic, like in this case, you can just drop this particular row and it will be up. Um, I don't know. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to do the second one. So uh, in order for highlight this. So what, what is going to happen is that I'm going to drop it. So when the VM is going to reply to the 172.24.43, OVN is not going to know the MAC address. So OVN controller is going to send an ARP request to the 172.24.43 in the central node. And we're going to see that coming through the TCP then. And traffic should be restored. So uh, let me do from here. Um,
So let's run the thing from here. It doesn't work. Okay. Let's capture ARPS and then I'm going to drop this match binding entry by the UUID, H8 course 3, whatever. And there you go. Like the traffic starts to work. And in the upper window, you see that what that triggered all the encounter to request the ARP for the 172.24.43. So now the, the new location has been learned. And if you check again, this query up here is not, is, is not going to have the dead beef, the poisoned mark anymore. There you go. It has the right one, which is the one that we configured in the machine. Well, we there ending in E049. Okay, so we restore the traffic here again. Um, any questions up to here? Uh, just a quick question. Uh, you, you, you destroyed the database, right? Don't you have to repopulate it or? Uh, sorry? Uh, you you uh, destroyed the database, right, uh, from the south. Uh, don't you have to repopulate it, or it's automatic? Oh, yeah, like, uh, yeah, I destroyed this particular entry. So um, what is going to happen is that when the reply packet is sent by the VM, OBM control is not going to find any entry in the Mac binding, so it will decide to send an ARP, as we saw in the upper right window. And what upon the receiving of the ARP reply, OBM control will populate the DB automatically. So if we check it again here, the entry has appeared, right? So if I I can delete it again, so okay, okay, I got it, I got it. Yeah, okay. okay, okay, yeah. But every time that um, OVN sees an IP, uh, it it will just populate it. Um, you okay, know, you okay. see the the port where it has observed the ARP. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and the if you see like what I used here. If you see the UUID that I, I used earlier, 8843D, now it's a different one, it's 8F8. So OB and Contrary created this one. Also, you can go to the DB and actually see the transaction and who executed, but that would be too much. So we're gonna run out of time. But yeah, uh, it was populated again by OB and Contrary. Thanks for the question. Okay, so let's move on. Um, the next failure, we need to execute it in the worker one. Uh, so let me, do that from here. Failure number three. Okay. And then I'm gonna use the same IP and ping it. So it doesn't work. Uh, we have disrupted the floating IP traffic. Again, what is happening? We can we can see. Okay, nothing is coming, right? So, um, because it's we know that it's DVR, um, the traffic needs to come from the physical interface, right? So we we are uh, we cannot see anything here. It's probably because even this is not the central machine is not even able to resolve the one thirty two. So the entry has expired in the local. Our cache for the central node, so they cannot even resolve the MAC address of the 132. So what happens is that we are probably going to see the apps coming through the physical interface. There you go. So we see the uh, central node uh, um, querying the MAC address of the of the VM of the floating IP, but it doesn't work. So who is responsible for replying to this ARP? Uh, so actually it's OVN control running in worker one, but the ARP is not coming through VR int because if we check here, sorry, in the worker node, uh, we see the layout in OBS. We see that, yeah, we have the two breaches. We have the VR int and the VREX, but there's no patch port that intact connects both. So the packet is arriving to the ethernet to, to VREX, uh, yeah, we see the the packets here. Okay, there you go. I 
everything that I need to set the open flow 15. Okay, it doesn't matter. So that we, we saw that the actual ARPs are coming through Ethernet too. So what is happening here is that um, the packet arrives to BREX, but there's no connection to BRE. So the packets are going to be dropped in BREX because there's no other ports. So what we need to do, like the interconnection between BREX and BREIN is, uh, is done through the configuration of the bridge mappings, which is a similar concept that we have in Neutron Ammo 2 as well. So those are configured on each hypervisor in the external IDs, right? So if you see, uh, get open external IDs, sorry. So this is actually telling OVN that whenever you see a physical network data center, then you need to create a patch port uh, between BR int and BR and this bridge is specified here. So if we see in our dev stack setup, uh, our public network. Okay. Is called public, so that's the that's the name of the fiznet. And in OVN, we can we can figure out like the way that OVN realizes this connection to the external bridges via port call of type local net. So we will have a logical switch port. And we can see it here. We we have a logical switch in OVN, which has the router ports. Each the, each router port represents a subnet, an interface connected to one of the red and blue networks. It has a local port. This local port is used for metadata. And it has a local net port. This local net port is to provide a connectivity to an external bridge. So if we see the configuration in the database for this port, we can logical switch point here, type equals local net. So you see the options column, it says the network name is public. But what we had to configure in the worker one is data center. Another way that we can have to figure out this type of, you know, external connectivity issue is by checking the OVN controller log. Usually OVN controller will warn us about this. I'm oh, sorry, it's logs, right? Yeah, so what OVN control is telling us here is like, uh, there's this local net port that we haven't found a bridge for it. So the traffic kind of go out or in, so it's warning us. Um, so definitely we know the issue, right? Like the issue is that we don't, we have the wrong mappings configuration. So all we need to do is fix them. So instead of getting this, we just set it like public. BREX. And then if I ping again, it works. And then in the worker node, we can we can see that OVN has created a patch port. So now you see this patch propnet, which is a patch port between BREINT and BREX. So this is how the traffic is coming from the physical network to the BREINT and processed by OVN. So um also be aware that if you do this, if you execute this command here, you may be overriding other networks. So you could have something like, I don't know, um, I don't know, FISNET to PR provider, something like this, right? This is the same syntax as in ML2, obvious. So I don't think that there's a way to set a pair, uh, a mapping individually. I think that you need to write the entire thing. So whatever you, you want to configure here, you need to, like if you just want to eat a particular mapping, you need to be careful and not override whatever it was in the DB already. So this configuration is read in real time by OVN controller. You don't need to restart OVN controller at all. It just you write it into the local OBS DB and it will be picked up automatically by OVN controller as we just saw. Okay. So far so good. Good, so let's move on. We have 15 minutes, hopefully not. So we're going to run the failure 
number four. Uh, okay, so what I have done here is to, you know, basically prevent the HCP uh, from working in this particular VM in the blue one. So let's verify that this is the case. So what I'm going to do, this is this is kind of like the equivalent thing that we used to do in ML2 OVM when we were to the Q router namespace or the QDTP namespace to access a machine that doesn't have a floating AP. So we have a floating AP, but we're gonna do it locally anyway. So um, our floating AP, sorry, our local IP is on the 20 network, if I'm not mistaken. The catch with this trick is that we need to go to the actual hypervisor that hosts the VM. So we are going to use the metadata namespace, but we need to go to the machine that is actually hosting the VM. In this case, we, we know it's on worker one. So, um, okay. So it's on the 20. If you can see here, the tab 744 has the 20 network. So we can use this namespace to access the machine. So we can SSH. Zeros twenty zero zero eleven. Go full go. This is our machine, right? And then let's let's query uh, the HCP, and it doesn't work. So we have a machine. It kind of fetch an IP. What's going on? So ideally, like. I mean, there could be things that uh, we can look at. For example, the way that DHCP works in OBN is we don't have DNS mask in a, in a remote hypervisor. All the DHCP service, I mean, it would it could work with the Newton DHCP agent, but the default way of handling DHCP is locally in the hypervisor. So there's going to be a flow in OBS that will send via controller action to OBN controller. And OBN controller will process that packet and reply to the DHCP request. So if the if OVN controller is not running, uh, then we don't have DHCP. So we can, you know, is OVN controller running? Yes, it is running. So that kind of be, or maybe there's something wrong. You, we can check the logs to see if there's some error or something. So the most, uh, you know, the, the way that we should start troubleshooting this by looking into DB contents. Is, is this, of course, we have checked that Neutron has the DHCP enabled for that sub and so on and so forth. We isolate everything to OVN, and then we need to figure out what's wrong in OVN and hopefully fix it. So what, ha what happened here is that uh, we are sending DHCP requests and there, there's no reply coming. So OVN sends everything to contract. Uh, we can actually verify that there's let me check like, you know, these queries, these broadcast queries for the ATP port 68 destination, and they are unreplied in, con in contract. So the, the connection, like the DHCP request is same here, but there's no reply. Uh, what could be the reason? Could be a reason first, a misconfiguration on the OVN side. Let's see. So how we, how Neutron configures the ATP is if you recall what Slavic said earlier, we have a direct mapping between a neutron subnet and a row in the DHCP options table. So if you see that the one that corresponds to this particular subnet would be the first one, right? Which is the 20.00 slash 24. And then what neutron does is for each logical uh, switch port, uh, let me fetch, um, the blue, I had a command here. So I can find the logical switch port whose neutron port name is port blue one. All right, oh, sorry. So we can see that this, this is actually our, our VM, right? And it has 20.0011, which is our VM. And you will see that there's this column DHCP V4 options, which is empty. So this is what is telling OVM that this machine doesn't require any flows to handle DHCP. So in the table that handles those uh, flows, there's gonna be nothing. 
So when the traffic arrives, it's going to be dropped because there's not going to be any match in the open uh tables. So what we need, we need to do is to configure this column. So we can, uh, you know, we identified which subnet should be. And um, which is the first one here. So I'm gonna just use this ID and then we can set it manually here. So we can OVN and BCTL set low you can switch port this row and DHCPV for options equals the 92D whatever. Oh, sorry. Okay. And it works, right? So now just when we set that OVN controller install the flows and there's uh, it replies to so it actually, I think that we can even see it here. You see the yeah, 16, 19, 50. So we can see the DHCP offer and the DHCP app. So we fixed it by adding the particular DHCP options row to the logical switchboard. But this, um, again, like this is, if you know of a single port that has a configuration, you can go manually to the DB and fix it this way. Uh, we have other means of fixing this. We have been, so now I did it again. I introduced the failure again. So we don't have the ATP anymore for this particular VM. And one thing that we can do is we will, we have in the neutron repo, we have this script called neutron OVN DB sync, which maps or tries to match the neutron DB contents to OVN contents. So if there's something missing, we will try to fix it. It doesn't work on all the scenarios. So if you're going to go, um, you know, I don't know, change um, some field, uh, it may not be fixed. But for example, for the DHCP, or if you remove a complete object, or even if you drop the whole OVN DB, this script is gonna make sure that all the OVN resources are gonna get created. So if you're unsure about certain field or something, you can remove the object and run this script. So I'm gonna do it for you to see. Um, it's very handy and um, just, as a, you know, just to point out that this script is the one that is used for migrating. So if you are moving to, from ML to OVS to ML to OVN, you're likely going to use this script, which is going to populate the OVN DB from the contents of the neutron DB. So I'm going to run the script. Actually, the parameters are the ones that you use for running neutron server. It's going to pass the configuration the same way to have all the settings, DVR, non-DVR, the connection strings to the DB, so on and so forth. I'm gonna put it in repair mode. You can specify lock just to see what is supposed to be doing uh, because I know that what is going to be doing, I'm gonna just go ahead and do it in repair mode. And then I'm gonna dump this uh, output to the to the DB sync lock. By the way, I'm gonna remove it first because I probably have one. So I'm gonna do it and the moment that this tool, and, and by the way, you don't need to stop Newton server. You can run this in parallel and it will connect to the DBs and fix whatever it needs to fix. So uh, as you see, if you see in the upper right corner, the machine has already been able to uh, fetch the ATP. So it fixed the DB. Uh, one thing that, that we, we can inspect the log actually now to see that this, is, um, this has been fixed. So one thing that we can do is because we know the port, uh, the port list. We can we can grab for this particular port ID in the log, and we can see what what the DB sync script has done to this port in the OVN DB. Yeah, so if you see it now, well, this happened just now, but basically what, what it has done is it has detected that the DHCP V4 options were missing. So it just fixed it by running a set, like the same thing that we did earlier manually. So on this particular logical port, it sets the DHCP V4 options to that one of the subnet that it belongs to. And it worked. So two ways of fixing it. 
some basic troubleshooting how to determine whether you know the problem is normally a misconfiguration it could be it could be something else it could be open contract being too busy or open contract being dead so these things you need to figure out but this could be most of the times the issue would be probably misconfigurations or well but uh, this, this is also applicable to any other object so if you like if, if we are unsure about certain for example floating ap the same exercise that we did in the failure number one we can totally drop the nut entry and run this script and it will recreate it for us uh, okay and then moving on to the last exercise let's do this as well on the worker so failure number five okay and uh so what we can do here is um let me let me for example run this command here with a watch so we are going to query the agent list uh, so we have central node acting as an OBN contract gateway agent and the OBN contract agent in worker one. So what I have done in the worker one is I have uh, I have modified the connection string to the DBs, to the southbound DB. So, so in the logs, we can see that there's some error in the connection. Uh, I just moved the protocol from tcp to ssl so that it fails so it cannot connect to the southbound db uh the problem with this is like if you see for example if i do the dhcp request again it works because obn control is up and running it doesn't need to be connected to the southbound in order to uh fulfill requests from pms like dhcp or dns so everything that requires a control option action is going to be running regardless of the db availability so data plane should be fine. But uh, if I would try to boot a new VM on this hypervisor, it will not work because OBN control is not aware of the changes via OBSTB. So as you can see on the on the left window, the OBN controller agent is now shown as dead and XXX. So OBN uh, controller is dead there. We need to fix it. So usually how you, if you see something on the left, like, like in the left screen, usually you need to go it, it may indicate a problem with OBM and try being able to connect to the southbound DB. So there is a mechanism in place in Neutron where Neutron server writes a timestamp and it just needs to reply to, to that right now, uh, to that timestamp, acknowledging that it has seen it. So in this case, because it cannot connect to the DB, it cannot, it cannot write to the DB. So eventually after 75 seconds, which is the default agent downtime, it will show up as, as dead. So what we need to do in order to restore to restore the connectivity is fixing the connection string, right? So again, the connection, everything, all the OBN configuration is in the local LVSDB. So we can do get open OBN remote, and you see it's using SSL. So actually, it could be SSL, but we have not configured this machine with SSL yet. So basically, we we'll, we'll, we would we can actually verify this, for example, like this. The connection table you see it has PTCP, so it's it's going to use TCP. So all we need to do uh, is fix the connection string. So that it uses. TCP. And after I said this, OVM control will pick it up automatically and it will register uh, the heartbeats, uh, hopefully. And you see it's immediate, it's happy again on the left window. So, yeah, another scenario that we thought it was a typical troubleshooting scenario, like, you know, identifying issues with the connection to the DB. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, we have just two minutes. I'm sorry it was longer than I was expecting, but feel free to make any questions that you may have. Also, whatever is pending on the either part, 
uh, we'll make sure that we answer all the questions that you may have. All right. Thanks everybody for attending. Thank you. Thank you. One more uh, word at the, at the end. Uh, later tonight, I will uh, export the slides to the PDF or some other something like that, and I will put the link to the slides in the ether part, so you can you will be able to download them. Okay. Um, thank you. All right. Thank, th you. thank you for attending. I hope it was uh, interesting yes, for was, you. It was very interesting. Yes, it, it was. Thank you for the for the presentation. Thank you, folks, for attending. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.